somewhere between four and five thousand years worth of the rule of the pharaohs came to an end. That is monumental. And it happened today. When Hosni Mubarak stepped down from being the pharaoh of Egypt, a dictator ruling over those people, whether he was benevolent or whether he was misguided, he was a dictator. But the people are crying out for democracy. This is so much in the Bible. When we go through the teaching on the book of Revelation, you're going to see when I wrote the book three years ago, that I prophesied just by reading the Bible what would happen in the Middle East. That the Muslim threat will one day come to an end. I don't hear anybody else talking about this. They all say, before the Lord comes, the big threat on the earth will be Muslim fanatics. But that is not true. Because in the book of Revelation, it's not Muslim fanatics that Jesus fights against when he returns. It's a spirit of humanism that has come over the entire world. Now in this age, the biggest threat on the world right now is Muslim fanatics. Absolutely. But at the beginning of the book of Revelation, in Revelation chapter 6, four apocalyptic horsemen are released from heaven. They come from the presence of the Lord. They are spirit horses with spirit riders. And one of them brings the world into war. That will be World War III. There are three wars, three international wars in the book of Revelation. The one at the very end is at the end of the millennium when Satan's released to tempt the nations and he comes forth and gathers the people like the sand of the sea to march against Jerusalem and the heavens open before a shot is fired fire comes out of heaven from God himself and destroys them completely and Satan's cast in the lake of fire then there's another world war that takes place just before and in Revelation chapter 19, before the millennium starts, when all the nations come and march against Jerusalem, and that's called the Valley of the Battle of Armageddon, in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, and there the Lord Himself, as Jerusalem is being attacked, at that time the Lord Himself comes riding on a spirit horse with a sword in his hand, his robe dipped in blood, not his thigh, it says, King of kings and Lord of lords. And he comes with all the armies of heaven, and he breaks through the clouds, and the dead in Christ shall rise. Amen, and we which are alive, which means some of you are going to live right till the end of the tribulation period. Amen. And some of you, and we which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with him in the air, and nanosecond transformation <laughs> and you better be better looking <laughs> and physically fit without oil of Olay or without Jenny Craig or any of those other movements to help you look better no you won't even need curves anymore God's going to do it instantaneously and then you're going to rule and reign with him for a thousand years on this planet that's the gospel that's what's coming so those are the last two of the three world wars because at that time when Jesus comes he kills all of those who are opposing him and those who are marching on Jerusalem it says there'll be 200 million of them that's the number it gives in the book of Revelation 200 million soldiers marching on Jerusalem across the valley of Armageddon. But there's a third war in the book of Revelation. It's in the sixth chapter. It's one of those horsemen. Let me tell you what it's going to be about. It will be the democracies against the dictatorships of the world. We are fast approaching this war. 
when President Bush, the second one, went into Iraq. And there he, he planted a flag and said, we want to see a world where the people of each nation take ownership for their government, where there is democracies in the world. And people laughed at him. They scorned him. The media hated him and said, it'll never happen. You don't understand the Muslim hierarchy that says it's all about the pharaohs, the sheiks, those who lord it over the people. Everyone must be subservient to them. It's part of their Sharia law. But he says, no. We believe that the people want freedom and want democracy. And we've seen it to some degree. And there's a push towards it in Afghanistan. We've seen it to some degree. Now, in Tunisia, it blows apart. Now, in Egypt, monumental day today for dictatorship has fallen and democracy is about to begin. Do not think that this is the answer to their problems. It certainly isn't. Do you remember what happened in the Palestinian world when Bush pressed for democracy among those of Gaza and the West Bank? And so they had an election and they brought in Hamas. They voted in a terrorist organization to be their leaders. So just because you have democracy, democracy is not the answer. Democracy only works if the people in the nation have a heart that is focused on the Judeo-Christian ethic, on the biblical ethic. Right. If they don't have that, then they'll vote, they could all vote. One day they will for the Antichrist. They'll worship him. They'll follow him. Not because they're forced to, although there will be forcing measures for those who don't want to conform, but most of the world will willingly give their hearts to him because it will be democratic. Democracy is not the answer. The answer is Jesus Christ being King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. But in the meantime, until that happens, democracy is a halfway measure. And if the people have a church in their country that's on fire, that's alive, and lives are being changed, then democracy can work. Because the people will vote for that which is godly and righteous. And righteousness will exalt the nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. So here we see Egypt today making this move. Let's look at the Bible and see what it says about Egypt. There's so much in the Bible about Egypt that we cannot look at it all. But I want to take you to one scripture in the book of Isaiah. Will you come with me to Isaiah chapter 19? It says, I see the Lord rides on a swift cloud and is coming to Egypt. The idols of Egypt tremble before him. The hearts of the Egyptians melt within them. I will stir up Egyptian against Egyptian. That looks pretty um, close to some of what we've seen on the news. Egyptian against Egyptian. Brother will fight against brother. Well, it didn't go into civil war. But I'm giving you some ideas of what will come. Neighbor will be against neighbor, and city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. The Egyptian will lose heart, and will not bring their plan, and I, that is the Lord, will bring their plans to nothing. They will consult the idols and the spirits of the dead, mediums and the spiritists, and I will hand the Egyptians over to the power of a cruel master, and a fierce king will rule over them, declares the Lord Almighty. Now if we read on, 
we see that God will bring them to a place of humility. And I can't read every verse here for time's sake, but go to verse 19. In that day there will be an altar to the Lord in the heart of Egypt. After all of the catastrophe comes. And the monument to the Lord at its borders. It will be a sign and a witness to the Lord Almighty in the land of Egypt. When they cry out to the Lord because of their oppressors, He will send them a savior and defender, and He will rescue the Egyptians. Do you read this? God is going to rescue, eventually, the Egyptian people. So the Lord will make Himself known to the Egyptians. And in that day, they will acknowledge the Lord. They will worship with sacrifices and grain offerings, and they will make vows to the Lord and keep them. Isn't that good? And the Lord will strike Egypt with a plague. He will strike them and heal them. They will turn to the Lord and He will respond to their pleas and heal them. In that day, there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria. The Assyrians will go to Egypt and the, Egyptian, and the Egyptians to Assyria. The Egyptians and Assyrians will worship together. In that day, Israel will be the third along with Egypt and Syria, a blessing on the earth. The Lord Almighty will bless them, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, Assyria, my handiwork, and Israel, my inheritance. Now that's exciting. <coughs> Assyria is not Syria. Assyria is Iraq, where President Bush has been used by God to start the process. And so what will happen is that the whole of the Middle East will go back and forth between democracy, pressures for, for democracy, protest for democracy, and sometimes when they get their votes, they will vote wrong because of their disposition and their bias and what they've been taught. And they might bring somebody into power who's worse than the person who left. In fact, the scripture says that all of that back and forth kind of activity will take place, and it will actually take place in all of these nations. You're going to see it. The whole of the Middle East will be transformed. But they will still come against Israel, and God will defend Israel, and Israel will grow. And in the end, after Egypt, we're just using them as an example because they're in the news today, but after Egypt is brought low and brought to a place of utter despair and failure and her people are uh, abused and wounded and hurt at that time then the Lord will come and he will reveal his son Jesus to them and they will begin to worship the Lord and all the people of Israel will dedicate themselves to the Lord and make vows to the Lord and they will keep them. And it will be a nation given to Jesus. This is what the Bible says. And it doesn't just happen in the millennium because it's talking about times of trouble and difficulty where there are oppressors and all kinds of problems. So you ought to have great hope for Egypt. You ought to say, praise God. He's going to turn that nation unto himself. And the same is true of Assyria, which is Iraq. Because the seeds have gone in there, it is a fulfillment of the prophetic word of the Lord. And there will be a holy highway that will go from Egypt, through Israel, to the land of Babylon, which is Iraq, Assyria in the Bible. And they will worship the Lord. They will be like a, a triad of people who worship the Lord. And the pilgrims will have a holy highway dedicated to the purposes of God. This is before the return of Jesus. So there are some exciting things happening. Now, not all the Arab nations have such a bright future. The Bible talks about two kinds of nations at the end of the age. We can read about them in the book of Matthew. It says there are goat nations and sheep nations. 
in Matthew 25 and verse 32. Let's read verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in His glory with all of His angels with Him, He will sit on the throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate the people one from another as the sheep separates uh, the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on His right and the goats on His left. Then the King will say to those on His right, Come, you are blessed of my Father. Take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. So here we see that all the nations are going to be judged as well as individuals. And we call these nations uh, one of two things. They are either sheep nations or they are goat nations. And every nation is going to be judged. I want to let you know that the Bible tells us that Israel, Egypt, and Iraq are going to be sheep nations. Praise God. Praise God. What that means is that when the millennium begins, the Lord comes and lands on the Mount of Olives, <clears throat> rescues the Jewish people, reveals those of, to them who don't yet know that He's the Messiah. But long before they get the revelation. <clears throat> they can't get saved without recognizing him as Messiah. <laughs> but long before that happens, there's going to be a fabulous resurrection day for the saints who are part of the vineyard. The Gentiles all around the nations. <clears throat> and then when Jesus comes, he is going to destroy his enemies, bind the devil, and throw him in the pit for a thousand years, take the false prophet and the beast, the Antichrist spirit, and throw them in the lake of fire. All the sinners on the earth who have been vile, evil, wicked people, almost all of them, because there are some exceptions in the Bible, Almost all of them will be killed instantly by the word of his mouth. And thereby their spirits will go into Hades for a thousand years. The pit, the abyss, a prison. That place where there is a place of torment that Lazarus the beggar looked over the great gulf from Abraham's bosom and he saw them in flames of fire. That's that place. And then the nations, which God has made the nations, some of them are going to be coming into the millennium. I think the United States will be there. There will be revival in many nations. There will be civil war in all the nations. And it will be what we call World War III to be a part of that or an extension of that uh, where there will be some people who just will not get the mark on them they will not follow the ways of an antichrist spirit and will walk with the Lord and when the Lord comes they will still be here and God will raise them up he's going to save so many people do you see what it says there in, uh, in our understanding of the book of, of uh, Isaiah there about Egypt that God will punish them, will bring the plagues of Egypt upon them, and then they will turn to the Lord. That's what it says. That will happen all over the world. In fact, that's what the whole book of Revelation is about. It's about God bringing judgment on people so that they turn to Him. <clears throat>